bring up Kevin Schofield, please. Hey, oh, hey, you got another thing coming. You got another one coming. So. Uh, <laughs> what's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So, Kevin, I mean, this this budget, and this is, I mean, I'm sure people every year watch the budget on different things, but this year the budget really got my attention and a lot of other people's attention here in the city because of all the different things around it, especially around social change and equity in the city. So maybe you can give us a breakdown of exactly what occurred. But I know you're, you're, you're wordy and nerdy, but today, you know, we're on TV. So we, <laughs> we got to keep it somewhat <laughs> less wordy. You can break okay, down less wordy. Yeah. So uh, they passed the about $1.6 billion main budget altogether, including like all the capital expenses. It's about $6 billion. Last week, they, you know, cranked through about 160 different amendments to the budget, some really small, some a lot bigger. Um, they, uh, you know, have taken the money that's coming out of the new payroll tax that they passed last summer. And they um, undid a number of the, you know, uh, you could say austerity budgeting, but, you know, COVID recession budgeting, you know, cuts that the mayor had, had, had proposed to try to make sure that they're laying off your people, that they're um, sort of maintaining the consistency of services in the city. Uh, you know, we were talking about uh, food insecurity a few minutes ago. One of the things they did last week was they added another $1.3 million to the fr Fresh Bucks program just to make sure that, uh, that the city is doing everything it can to address uh, uh, food insecurity in, in all the places where it shows up. And, you know, and then there's a lot of focus on, uh, you know, COVID response and making sure that we have the right, you know, we're doing all the right things in, in all the different ways around the city. But then, of course, there's, there's a big focus, of course, through the whole fall on the SPD budget and, and what's going to happen with that. And, and in the end, we, you know, where they, uh, you know, laid out was uh, where they ended up was when the mayor, you know, submitted her budget. She was saying, you know, I want to be able to, you know, have funding for about 1400 officers. Uh, the current thinking is that with all the extra attrition, unplanned attrition they've had this fall, um, SPD is going to end up at at the end of this year at probably about 1,295 officers. Uh, and and there's a there's a plan next year which you know um, estimates a number of additional attrition they'll have. Probably they you know originally estimated about 89 next year. And the, the hiring plan they put with that said that they'd be able to hire about 114. So it'd be a tiny little increase kind of back up, uh, not, not compensating entirely for all the extra attrition that's happened this year, but it would be concentrating, you know, it would move back up a little bit. And that, you know, obviously, I think, you know, you guys heard this in the community as well over the last few days, um, you know, there, there is a, there is a pretty, you know, unpleasant response to that of like, hey, wait a minute, SPD could potentially grow a little bit next year. I thought we were trying to, you know, to, to, you know, reduce the size and impact of the police department. Maybe not by fifty percent, but you know, although certainly there are people advocating for that. But, um, you know, let's, why, why the heck would we let them grow back up a little bit, uh, you know, from there? And you know, it gets into these questions about, uh, you know, to what extent. Do they need to be able to hire back um, people to cover, you know, places where they've lost people on patrol, or lost people in specialty investigative units to make sure they can cover all the bases what they need to cover? But in the end, yesterday, there was one last minute amendment that the city council put through that was another $2 million cut to SPD. And so now where they're going to end this year, about twelve ninety five, it looks like uh, they'll end 2021 about you know if if the estimates are right about 1286 so what uh what happened was last friday the council got some uh updated news on october and spd's attrition in october turned out to be higher than everybody originally thought it was going to be and so the, what the city council is now saying is you know based upon that we think that the higher attrition is going to extend through next year so you know 89 is a real lowball estimate as to how many people are going to lose next year. Let's make that 114 and let's plan on them being even next year. And, you know, to be quite honest, both of those numbers, you know, the number of people they think they're going to hire and the number of people they think they're going to lose are, you know, testing like they're just, they're kind of made up numbers, right? And there's estimates every year on what these numbers should be and they're wrong every year, maybe a little high, maybe a little low, depending on all the different things that go on during the year. But, um, you know, the city council 
gets to say how much funding SPD has, and they're saying, you know, the amount of funding we're going to give you is assuming you're going to be flat next year. Wow, Kevin, thank you for that recap. I, I just have really one question. I mean, and good morning, Kevin. <laughs> hey, good morning. I love your earrings. You always have the best earrings. Thank you, Kevin. Well, well what, I really have uh, this question. What does this mean for community groups? We have these coalitions, DCRIM, King County Equity Now. Uh, what does this mean for them? Yeah, so one of the things that the city council has been doing is they, you know, and they made all, you know, a series of cuts to, you know, kind of surgical cuts to SPD this fall. They've been taking the money from that and they've been putting it into a fund to invest in community investments so that we can, uh, as a city, grow uh, and scale up uh, community-led alternatives to, to make sure that, that we have community safety that don't involve sending out armed police officers to everybody. So going into last week, they had about $30 million set aside for that. This last $2 million that they that they cut yesterday is also going into that. So that's, that's $32 million. On top of that, they've got $10 million they're putting in this year, and they've set aside $3 million in a contract they just signed uh, with King County Equity Now to run this participatory budgeting process next year. So they're there. And then there's the mayor's $30 million equitable, equitable communities initiative. So there's, you know, on a number of different fronts, things going on to uh, that the council has has made sure happen to to make sure that there's money to invest in community led programs that, that we really have alternatives um, and and you know the, the I think as we get into this year and we get into the participatory budgeting process we're going to you know have to figure out a lot of hard questions around how quickly we can really spend those up right and what is it going to take so that 911 dispatch calls go to these other organizations instead of to SPD or the fire department to uh, so that we can have the community really taking the lead on these things. There's a lot of logistics that still need to be worked out on this step. But the city council has really said, look, we're not done cutting SPD, but at this point we need to really, you know, invest in and scale up these community alternatives first before we flip the switch and say, we're going to the community instead of SPD on these things. And and they're really, well, they, you know, they're, what they're saying is they feel the pressure to reduce SPD and reduce it quickly. They also, you know, are kind of hesitant until they, we really all feel comfortable that we have the alternatives in place on that. All right. Well, I mean, a, a lot of, a lot of, uh, feedback that I got was that different community organizations see it as a, a win for them. Maybe not the whole win that they wanted, but you know, they've seen it as a win in a line of wins. Kevin, I got less than 30 seconds here. We'll see if you can do it uh, real <laughs> quick. Some, something else here. Let me put this up on screen. Is this a uh, new car tab fee? Can you tell us about that real quick? Yeah. So um, up through the end of this year, with the old Seattle Transportation Benefit District, car tab part of that has been $80. And, uh, you know, $40 of that was, actually $60 of that was approved by voters, $20 was the council could do itself. Council could actually do up to 40 itself. And, you know, we just went through this whole thing with Initiative 976, so that, that, you know, everybody was scared that the city was gonna completely lose ability to do car tabs. It turns out that got overturned. So now the city is coming back and saying, well, we didn't get any car tabs in the thing that voters just approved you know, earlier this month, but we're gonna up the $20 part that the city can do to $40. So altogether, what's gonna happen to your car tabs is they're gonna go from $80 down to $40. That's an extra $20 from every car tab for the city. And three of the council members, Peterson, Herbold, and, um, and, uh, Lewis said, hey, we want to put that into bridge maintenance because we are way, way underfunding bridge maintenance. And a number of the other council members said, whoa, 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 let's do a three-month community uh, sort of stakeholder process and figure out if there are other priorities that it should go to instead. So that's what's going to happen in the first three months of, of, of 2021. Uh, they're they're going to run that lead process, and we'll see what recommendations come out of that. The, the bridges is literally falling down. I know that. Yeah, they, you know it's it's interesting. Like 30, 40 million a year in maintenance. Yeah, so they just for uh, earlier this year they got a um, they got a, a report from the city auditor that said that you know based upon industry standards the city should be spending somewhere between thirty and a hundred million dollars a year on bridge maintenance, and we are spending this year we're spending eight, right? So 
Council of America got some more money in there, so it looks like it's getting about twelve. This twenty dollar car tab would have put uh, because it just start, it's only going to be about half of next year because they need six months to get it up and running. It's going to be it would add another three point six, but in the years after that, that would be about seven point two million dollars. So it's we're not still not making the minimum amount. We're still not even making thirty dollar uh, thirty million. Um, but it's sort of edging closer. I, I think, you know, one of my concerns, and I think, you know, uh, of the three council members who are pushing for putting into bridge maintenance, you know, I think their big concern was, you know, this is an auditor recommendation saying like, we're way off. And, you know, bridge maintenance is not sexy, right? It, it's, it's an invisible thing. You don't see it, but it's something we have to do. And, you know, if we put this out to a stakeholder process, you know, we're going to get a lot of sexy recommendations back about things, you know, that are highly visible and they're good things. I'm not saying any of them are bad things to invest in, but we're just, you know, this is how you end up funding, you know, bridge maintenance at $8 million instead of 30 to hundred, right? Is well, because it's not sexy. I'll tell you this, for people that live in West Seattle, it's definitely a visible issue now. It's, it's a bit. visible but issue now. Yeah, it absolutely. It is now. Hey, uh, we got to let you go here, Kevin. We're getting ready to take a break, man. Appreciate you as usual for joining us. Always keeping us up to speed on things. You can make sure and check out Kevin at sccinsight.com.